Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to EE206, Introduction to Electrical Systems and Computation, where we are going to introduce the various areas of electrical engineering. This is a second session on communication. In the first session, we have defined the block diagram of a communication system, the meaning of a transducer, uh, the concept of the frequency spectrum, and the concept of filtering. Okay. Now there is a second challenge in communication. Let's say I will use wire for my communication. So that will be my channel for transmission, <clears throat> a wire. Okay, and we know now I can send speech over wire by converting the speech into current through a microphone, send, send it over the wire to the other end where we have a speaker, and that's a full communication system. Now, the question is, can I fit more than one speech signal, more than one signal over the same wire? Is it possible to get several speeches, several pieces of speech, several signals, and send them over the same channel? Well, actually, if the answer to this is no, we are really in trouble because, you know, we cannot afford pulling a wire for every two persons that they want to speak. You know, imagine that the type of spaghetti word you're going to have if every two would need to pull wires between you know, A and B, so that A can talk to B and B can talk to A. So clearly we need, you know, to share the same channel, whether it's wire, whether it's space. Again, space, you know. I mean, you cannot say for everybody, stop, uh, you know, communicating over the space because somebody would like to say something about the space. So we need to share the channels. We need to share the channels. We need to, you know, put many signals together and send them over the same channel, whether it's a wire, or in space, or, you know, a uh, fiber. We need to put them together. The concept of, uh, you know, putting things together over one channel is known in communications as multiplexing. But the question is, how is that possible? How can we put many signals over the same channel? Or let me put it the other way. What is the problem? Yeah, I can, you know, just, you know, uh, have several microphones connected with a, with a connector here, you know, to, to this wire, and then they all can speak. Yes, and they can send everything over the channel. Yes, true. But where is the problem? The problem is, on the other hand, when I receive all those speech signals together, how am I going to separate them? How would I isolate the different signals and separate them from each other? Well, remember we talked about filtering before? You may think of filters. Okay, will filter help? Will filter help me, you know, uh, isolate or separate the signals that are speech signals that are coming together on the same wire? Actually, not really. Think about it. You remember we said that all our speeches more or less fall on the same over the same band, a few hundred hertz to three kilohertz. So if I speak, I generate something in that range. If you speak, we generate something in that range, and so on and so on. Yes, if we send everything over the same wire you know, they will be mixing over that band. Now, even if you put a, a filter at the end, remember a filter is a device, you can design it to pass certain frequencies and reject others. Now, in this case, if we design it to pass frequencies between few hundred hertz and three kilohertz, it will pass everything. How we are going to separate the signals. So that's a big channel. We need to share the, that's a big challenge. We need to share, share the channel between many users but how are you going to do it? In particularly, I mean, it's not a problem, you know, sending them over the same channel. The main problem is how we are going to separate them. And what do we need to do in advance so that separation would be possible? Okay. Now, here comes the important, the most, probably most important concept of communications. And I would say if you would like to replace the word of communication by another word, it would be that word. The concept of modulation. What is modulation? Modulation, in simple terms, is the process of shifting the band. You know, every signal has a certain frequency band. It goes between certain frequencies to certain frequencies, speech or anything else. Modulation is the process of shifting the band from a certain range to another range, usually to a higher range. So if there is a way, and there is a way, 
of shifting the whole spectrum. So if you look at, you know, remember the speech signal, the speech spectrum we have before, before between a few hundred hertz, 300, 300 kilohertz, 300 hertz. If you sh shift that spectrum somehow to some other range, rather than be be being between zero and three, if you can make it, for example, between three and six, this process, shifting the frequencies from low band to higher band without changing the pattern. Now we don't change the shape of the spectrum. We basically shift everything up. This is called modulation. So modulation is a process of shifting certain frequency bands from low side to high side. Now, how would that be going to, to, to solve the problem of multiplexing? Very obvious now, okay? Now, if I have several speech signals that I would like to send over the same channel, before I can send them over the same channel, I use modulation, okay? I probably can leave the first one as is, but then I come to the second speech signal and modulate it. That is, I shift the spectrum from the range 0 3 to 3 kilohertz to a higher range. And I do the same for the third speech signal. I shift it to a even a higher range and to the fourth and fifth and so on. And this way, I can send them all over the same channel. Why the problem is solved now? Because now on the other side, though I'm receiving them all at the same time, but they are coming at different bands. And now filters will help. I can design a filter between zero and three kilohertz. So this filter will basically pass the first speech and reject all others. And then I take the wire to another filter designed between say three and six kilohertz. So it will pick the second speech and drop all the others and so on. So as you see, multi-modulation added or combined with multiplexing will allow me to share the same channel between many users. Now let's examine the concept of modulation in more details. Shifting the signal spectrum from low to high, this is called modulation. And you don't change the spectrum shape, you basically shift every frequency up. Can you guess what effect would that do on the sound. Let's say the, uh, the speech was Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and that's an modulated signal. Now, let's say you modulated this signal to a higher frequency, something between, for example, 9 and 12 kilohertz. Can you guess if I play this sound now after modulation, how would it sound? Think about it. Every frequency has been increase to a higher frequency. So the one, the one kilohertz now becomes 10 kilohertz, the 1.5 becomes 2.5. So every frequency has been shifted to a higher frequency. You know, when you go to higher frequency, what does it mean? It means it's a sharper tone. It's a sharper tone. So rather than now hearing Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, you will hear something like this. And excuse me for the tone. You'll hear something like this. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Everything gets sharper. But as you see, the skeleton, the overall structure is the same. Okay? Basically, everything becomes sharper. But now this allows me for multiplexing. Now, the normal question that you're going, you know, that you're going to ask now, okay, but clearly I don't want to hear the sound now. You know, you have changed something. The sound becomes sharper. Yes, the message is still there, but this is not the original sound. So when you have done modulation, this is what you have done to the signal. The question is how we're going to return it back to its original format or to its original band so that it sounds normal. We need to do the opposite process of modulation. The opposite process of modulation. And can you guess what is this called? This is called demodulation. So demodulation is the opposite of modulation. Can you define what demodulation is? If modulation is the process of shifting the band from low side to high side, then demodulation will be the process of shifting the band from the high side, or you call it the pass band, back to its original, original low side. So that's modulation, shift up, demodulation, shift down. And because actually modulation and demodulation are both the same process, basically, it's a process of shifting. Whether you shift up and down, it doesn't matter much with the electronics or the devices that are going to do this shift. 
So it's basically a shift up for modulation, down for demodulation. And because this is the case, actually one device can do both. And this device will be put at both sides, at the transmitter side, so that when you transmit, you, you modulate. And when you receive, you demodulate. So the same device can be used for modulation when it is transmitting and for demodulation when it is receiving. Can you uh, guess what name is given to this device? A device that does modulation in one side, demodulation on the other side. Yes, it's called the modem. The modem actually is a combination, an abbreviation of the two, and combination of the two words. Modulation and demodulation, you put it in one term, with a, which is called the modem. So now we know why we do modulation and we, do, we know how to do multiplexing. So basically now we have a set of signals. We would like to share them over the same channel. We'd like to multiplex them. So we need to do some form of modulation. Then we can multiplex them. And then we can demultiplex them with filters because now they come on different bands. And then we demodulate them by returning everything back to normal. And then we can pass them to the transducer, in this case, the speaker. And we hear the perfect sound as we have transmitted. OK, so that's modulation and multiplexing. Now, let's conclude this session by uh, having a few more words on modulation. How are we going to do this process? You know, we, shift, we said that modulation is the process of shifting the band from low side to high side. How we are going to do it? How we are going to do it? OK. Simple. We have on one side, we have on one side the signal. <clears throat> this is a low frequency thing. And I would like to modulate it. That is, I would like to make a change in the band to a higher range. I do this with the help of another signal called the carrier. The carrier actually is a perfect sinusoid, sinusoidal signal of a specific frequency. This frequency is the frequency of the shift. If you decide to shift everything by, for example, 10 kilohertz, so you need to generate a sinusoid of 10 kilohertz. So now, on one hand, I have my signal, a low frequency signal. On the other hand, I have a carrier, a signal I have generated in the lab, which is, you know, a high frequency sinusoid. Now, somehow, I would like to put them together, or in proper, more proper term, I would like to put my signal with the carrier so that the carrier will carry it. I would like to put my signal, combine it with the carrier to generate something that still keeps the features of my signal, but now is high frequency. And there are two ways of doing this, two ways of combining your signal with the carrier for this purpose. I would put it in this way. You either you put your signal on the carrier or you put it in the carrier. Now, if you put it on the carrier, you get something like what you have on the left side here. So that's your signal, a low frequency signal representation on the upper side there. This is your carrier, a high frequency sinusoid. What did you notice? What did we get out of this? We get this last nice, you know, ribbon, you know, type or, you know, whatever you call it, accordion type signal. What do you see in this signal? In this signal, you can see that. Do you see your signal? Do you see your original message in that plot? Yes, you can see it. Where is it? It is in the envelope. As you see, the envelope shape is exactly the same as your signal. But is this now a low frequency or high frequency signal? It's a high frequency signal. You can see the amount of variations you have in this signal. So this is a high frequency signal. So somehow I have put my signal on the top of the carrier. And by the way, this is a very straightforward process. Can you think how, you know, just from mathematics or graphics, what operation needed to be done on signal and carrier to generate the modulated signal. Can you think of it? What operation I have done on the signal and carrier to get the last plot? Actually, it's multiplication. If you multiply the first plot with the second plot, you get the third plot. So basically, having your signal, multiplying it with the carrier, you get what we call a modulated signal. This is the sharper sound, the modulated part that is ready now for multiplexing. That's one way of doing it where we have put 
the signal on the amplitude of the carrier. And this is why we call this amplitude modulation, abbreviated as AM. You have heard AM many times before, AM communication. That's amplitude modulation. Okay, the other way is, the other way is depicted on the left side, or on the right side, sorry, of the slide. Again, here I have my signal. In this case, it's the, gre the green plot. Uh, sorry, the red plot is my signal. Low frequency, as you see, I have generated a green one, which is the carrier, a high frequency, and I have generated the blue plot. Now, do you, I, please examine the blue plot. Examine the blue plot. Do you see your signal in the blue plot? Do you see your signal somehow in the blue plot? Yes. You can see that the variations of frequency in the blue plot is not the same. It's not like the green one. We have actually varied the frequencies in relation with the red signal. So when the signal is high, as you see the parts when the red signal is high, you have see you can see there are higher frequency of the blue signal. Where when the, when the red signal is low, at that time you have you know a lower frequency of your blue signal. So as you see now, the variations of the frequency of the blue signal somehow hides the information stores the information of your signal so it is somewhere there and actually there is a way to recover it there is a way to read the signal back from the signal this is also called now a modulated signal we have done some operation in this case it's not very straightforward not as simple as multiplication as we've done here it's more more involved but this is you know beyond the objective of this introductory course but there is some operation we can do between the signal and the carrier to generate the modulated signal. In this case, because we have played with the frequency, we have modulated the frequency, not the amplitude, we call it, we call it frequency modulation or uh, amplitude uh, or uh, free FM. Okay, so this is what AM and FM mean, and this is the main difference, you know, in the structure or the production of AM signals and uh, FM signals. Now, let me conclude this session by one last note. We said that modulation so far, we have introduced modulation as a needed step for multiplexing. But actually, modulation is needed for also something very, very important. If you want to use space as your communication channel, that is, you want to broadcast, we call it broadcasting. So you want to broadcast using antennas in this case, okay, over space. Now, unfortunately, it's not true that any antenna would work for any signal. You know, the antenna size, has to be related to the frequency of the signal you want to transmit or receive. It's not that you can bring any antenna on from the shelf and, you know, just send a signal of any frequency. This is not true. There are equations that relate the size of the antenna. If it's, a, you know, a wire antenna like this, it's the length of the antenna. If it's a parabola antenna, it is, you know, the, the area of the dish and so on. So there are equations that relate the size of the antenna to the frequency of the signal you want to transmit and receive. Generally speaking, we are not here to get into any details. Generally speaking, is the lower the frequency, the lower the frequency you want to transmit or receive, the bigger the size of the antenna. So if you want to broadcast a low frequency signal, you need a big size antenna. If you want to broadcast a high frequency signal, you can go with a small size antenna. Now, just to give you an idea when I say big or small, if you really want to broadcast speech signal without modulation, that is, you want to broadcast it when it is only 3 kilohertz without modulation, you probably need an antenna of few hundred, few kilometers, few kilometers to be able to broadcast effectively a speech signal. This is why, even if you don't want to do multiplexing, if you want to do broadcasting, that is, you want to use the space as your communication, you can never do this with low frequencies because the antenna size is huge. In this case, you need modulation for sure. You need to go for high frequencies so that you can use reasonable size antennas for uh, transmission and reception. So, so we have actually two main reasons why you do modulation, so that we can do multiplexing, sharing a channel between many signals, and to do uh, efficient or effective uh, broadcasting. This concludes our sessions on communication. I hope you have a clue of, of what the communication system is and thank you for listening.